Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here, back again with Painted Studios. Uh, we are today working on fun spring things. Uh, I have a few ideas that we're gonna sort of flesh out, and then um, we're gonna talk about the upcoming plants. Now, I'm just gonna get myself set up so I can see my live in front of me so that um, I can see comments and stuff without having to switch the camera around and things like that. All right, so let's, let's do a little introduction. For those not familiar, um, oops, wrong, wrong box, grab the wrong box. Uh, hey, Linda, hey, Terry, nice to see you here. Okay, um, so for those who are not familiar, these are what peg dolls look like. They're these darling little wooden finial shapes that sort of remind me of um, the little Fisher Price guys or uh, Russian nesting dolls or stuff like that. Now I ordered a bunch of them, they're very inexpensive. Um, and then I decided, okay, now what do I do with them? <laughs> and really these can be drilled through the tip here if you want to you know make them a little hanging ornament or something like that you can invert them and turn them into something else but they are considered dolls so today I painted one to look just like a little doll because it's very cute and again we top coat these and you know they're just little cute little tchotchke items they look great on wreaths They'd be great as a little gift for kids over the age of three, not so they, there's no issue of choking, and of course, have them sealed and top coated. Uh, I had a lot of stuff like this when I was a kid. I loved them. I used to just, you know, paint them along and march them around and have good time with them. So I thought I'd do some different versions of similar ones that I had. So the first thing we're going to do is flip the camera down. So it's right in front of me, and then I'm going to turn a light on so that we have even more light down here. The more light, the better. Make sure I got it aimed in the right place so that everybody can see. Now, uh, this is one that I got. Um, we're going to paint it with Fofex Metal Glow. Hey, Maddie, nice to see you. We're gonna paint this with photo effects. Metal Glow in Santa, color called Santa Maria. And uh, just so you know, um, you need to check things like uh, the ratings on things. So if you wanna do something like this for outside, this product, photo effects, Metal Glow is interior rated only. If you wanted it for outside, you want metallic set coat because that is interior and exterior rated. Now these are just wonderful colors. I just need to open it up since I didn't think to do that before I went live because I'm, I'm that kind of a smart genius. All right, so you may need two coats. Don't be surprised. That's nothing unusual. Here's, where's my brush? All right, so I'm gonna take my little guy, hold it up like this and paint the whole thing and then get the very tip of it. Now normally I paint with the grain, but because this was um, clearly cut on a lathe, it's already been tooled like this in a, where it was on a dowel at the end and it spun. So painting it this way is no big deal. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt the grain or anything else. Um, so we're just gonna use this. So we're going with Metal Glow Santa Maria. Now, as so you can see, or you might not be able to see, but Metal Glow is a little bit on the sheer side. Fun fact with Metal Glow, if you want to use this to paint something, like a wall or a piece of furniture, you need to make your final pass in the same direction or pounce it or spray it on. Why? Because there are mica particles in the paint. So, if you want a consistent shimmer, you brush it all in the same direction. Because if you do this, different directions, the light catches differently, it flips the mica particles, 
and you don't get a consistent shine and it tends to look streaky and dirty. And that's a safe one to use, safe to say on just about every metallic paint. Set coat is much less like that, but Metal Glow, oh yeah, you gotta do that. Or you have to create a random pattern with it that um, embraces it. So if you're not going stripes like this, you're gonna wanna take your brush, cross hatch it so that the pattern looks intentional. Me, I'm just gonna keep brushing it because I know I'm gonna do something else. Now, if I had a lot of these to paint, I'd probably drill holes in the bottom, put a screw in it, put the screw in a clamp, and then I could just rotate it as needed. I didn't buy that many for me to do. This is something I'm just playing with because I like them and they're cute. And then I set it down like this now that I've painted everything and get my fingers off of it. And I paint the tip. And as you can see, all my final strokes are in the same direction. Now I set it off to the side, let it dry, come back and do a second coat because that won't be well coated. So here is one that I did in, with two coats of, um, hey Desiree, nice to see you. So this is one I did with two coats of Elizabethan Plum. And then I applied our Artsyville foil adhesive all over the head. And then I put a band of it around the base. So um, I kind of battled around what to put over here, what to release on it, but I intend to paint over it. So. While I wanted texture and a little shine, I decided not to go too patterny. I'm gonna take a little piece of our purple tie-dye foil. Now, hopefully this is more than enough, unless I did a bad job of applying foil adhesive, which is always possible. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna wrap it around the head and kind of maul it a little bit, rub it with my fingers, warm it up, help it bond to here. Now my foil adhesive, just if you're not familiar, um, you apply it, it's thick, it will leave brush marks, so be prepared for that. It does not have self-leveling properties and it does not want to be thinned with anything more than 5% um, water if it's a little thick. After that, you start losing adhesive properties. So now I'm gonna roll it back off of this, peel it right back off, and look how cute that is on there. Now, with these things, you could create like a chess set and all kinds of fun stuff if you wanted to. Um, and I thought that would be awfully cute too. You could do a little family, a little dollhouse, a little simple dollhouse for a little girl with these guys. Make your own family figures on it. I think that would be very cute too. All right. Let's make sure I got all the other spots done. I felt a little sticky spot. And I don't want to miss anything. I like to get in there and make sure it's all adhered as much as humanly possible so I don't have any little gaps. So you can see that was very easy and look how cute that was. Hey, Rebecca, nice to see you here. So look how cute that is right there with the little stripes. Now, of course, you could leave it this way and these make just darling little figures that you just sort of place in corners. Great accent idea, very cute that way. But I started them out with, as dolls, so we're going to finish it as a doll. Now, as you can see, I have my palette here. It's the same palette you've seen me working with for the last few weeks. We have um, Set Coat Red, 
a faux effects faux cream color in parrot green a little set coat uh, white with uh, some French set coat French red faux color in it yellow faux cream color with a little bit of white faux cream color mixed together we have some of the parrot green mixed with the white white um, and then we have deep blue and then here we've got a light blue that's made from the white and the deep blue and black and sort of a little fleshy peachy color for various reasons you could use it for all kinds of stuff so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a little face on this now I'm going to I may have to do this more than once because I'm going to have to text test the colors to see how they show up on this so at the moment I need to sorry my phone rang um, I need to put some eyes on so let's see how this shows up for eyes now I'm gonna zoom this in so you can all see me a little better because it's a little hard to see this so far away so there's one eye and that's not the way it's supposed to be because it tipped so let's get a little my little tiny tiny super tiny q-tips from Muji go in give it a little wipe off since that's fresh paint it just wiped off with a little water it will cure hard over time but it you know I just put it on a second ago so it, it'll come off so let's get this on here little blue eyes and little pink lips oh, come on my brush wants to not cooperate today and my paint just wants to be a little dry right there so I gotta get a little water in it Now, when you've been using the same palette for a while and adding to it and trying to keep it moist you can you can get sudden dry spots with acrylics it doesn't quite work the same way with oil paints okay there's the, the little mouth and then I'm gonna take some red and make the cheeks come on gotta punch through that little skin that I let form on there So we've got a little, let me get it focused in there. We've got a little tiny face with red cheeks and pink lips. And then we're going to figure out what to do with the body. So clearly on this one, I painted the whole thing. I don't want to do that with this. I just want to enhance what I've already done. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. It's either going to look great or it's going to be a disaster, and I'm never sure which. Because this, I'm totally making it up as I go. Okay, there's that. Center seam. Let's take a little pink here. Let's do a little bow. There's that, that looks very cute. And I think we might kind of try to keep it a little simpler. Since it's so shiny. So let's take a little bit of, let's see. Which way do I want to go with this? Take a little green. Actually, I 
got a better idea. Let's do this differently than I was originally thinking. Like I said, I am totally doing this on the fly right now. I'm making it up as I go along. So it's either gonna be great or it's gonna look like crap. Okay, so I got four nice yellow stripes on there that are contrasting colors with the purple. And then I think I'm just gonna take a little green. Maddie, wouldn't these little shapes be adorable on a wreath? I thought those would be so cute. Maddie makes the most gorgeous wreaths. Okay, so we're going to go do a little zigzag right there. And then we're gonna do one up a little higher. And then we're gonna go back and do a low one. And we would probably do one up here too. And then we'll do a middle one right here. Sorry, it's right out of your view. I just had to move it because I couldn't see it. Okay, so I've gotten a couple little zigzaggy stripes there. And then, hmm, what color should I do? I think we'll do blue. Keep the colors light since this is such a dark background. And these are very much folk art style. There's, they're not, you know, careful. They're not sophisticated. They're not um, complex. They're designed to be sweet and simple. So I like that. It's very cute. And look how cute and simple that is. I like that. Now I can, uh, clearly I can do more, but I think I'm gonna let, ooh, something's flying around right in front of the camera. So I could do more, or I could let that sit for a second, which is what I'm gonna do, because I need a few dry spots. We're gonna come back, put a second coat of the Santa Maria turquoisey, tealy, gorgeous blue on this one, since I need this dried while we were talking and it's ready for a second coat. Now I'm pushing dry times because I'm here in the studio working on something small. If you were working on something bigger, it needs more dry time. <laughs> you won't get it drying up this fast because the paint literally soaked into the wood, but fortunately these are nicely made and the grain didn't pop, so I didn't have to worry about that happening, um, which can be a big issue. If you're not familiar with working on raw wood, most of the time you would put some sort of primer over it. These um, And I put I put set coat over raw wood, but I've you know then you have to sand it down because it will if it's not a hard grain tight grain wood like this is, it will um, lift the grain on you. So and get things done. All right, that one's done. That can go dry. Let me brush my brush marks off of it that I just put on there by accident. And this should be a little drier. Okay, so next thing I've got to do is come up with something for hair. So on this one, I did little wavy lines. That's not what I'm gonna do here because then that's gonna get really confusing looking. So I'm gonna take some dark blue and I'm just gonna take it and sort of swirl it around like this. And I got a little blue where I didn't want it. So I'm gonna take my little Muji Q-tip, go right in there. You can see now when I'm working on it, how tiny those Q-tips are. And they are so helpful. Okay. 
Okay, and that's good. When these, came, when these little peg dolls, I'd seen somebody else doing some projects with them, and when it came across my uh, inbox, I just thought they were so sweet, and I wanted to do something in the similar style to what I had been doing before. So I really like that. So and you see I put some little white dots right down the front that gave it a little detail. Um, and then I think I'm gonna take a little bit of the blue again. And we're gonna create a little design right here at the hat. big blob of paint on that brush I need to shift. <laughs> okay, so I've got that nice fan shape going there. And I think while it's, even while it's wet, I'm gonna go in with the white. And I'm not gonna worry about the fact that it's wet. I'll just let it blend in. cute that is. Now I think I've made this thing on the head stand out a little too much so I'm going to let it sit aside. I'm going to figure out what else I'm going to do with it but I think that um, finishes us up for the day. All right let me pull this back up. Zoom back out so you're not all looking up my nose and see if anybody left me any questions. Nope, everybody is just popping in, saying hi, and seeing what the little project is I'm working on today. Now the rest of the week, we're gonna go back to working on furniture. We've got some other projects lined up, some big spring cutouts we're gonna keep working on. So there's some fun things coming down the pike. Um, definitely stay tuned, and I will see you all later. Have a good one, everybody, bye-bye.